Hello and welcome to the Deets Sports Talk. I am Robert Dieters, your host. And um, on top tonight, we do have some NFL and MLB. I actually have two guest speakers tonight. I have Cameron and Chris Sylvester. Cameron is the host of Cameron Sadeghi Show, and I'm actually going to get him on right now. Hey, Cameron, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm on your show. Having a great time on this uh, great Wednesday night. So, Cameron, let's go to some. Uh, you're you're the big one of the big NFL guys I know. What what did you th who do you think is going to be the top prospects for rookies QB this season? Well, everyone's focusing on uh, Ryan uh, uh, Robert Griffin III and Andrew Luck, and I think that's very predictable. But I have to go with Robert Griffin III due to. Uh, the construction of the team. You look at Mike Shanahan, his son Kyle Shanahan, their offense, it's precise plays, at times can be a little bit conservative, but it's going to reduce the turnovers of RG3, and I think Robert Griffin III will be the top prospect, just uh, just for the fact for, the for his uh, supporting cast. Uh, that's why I think he's going to be the most successful. Now, Andrew Luck, I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't think he has the, enough pieces to have a better year than a Robert Griffin III. So I'm going to have to go with Robert Griffin III on this one. And what does RG3 bring to the Redskins? The Redskins haven't been a good team for a couple of years. Do you think now they'll be a good team with RG3 as QB? I think they will be because he provides that mobility uh, that is much needed to this offense. You look at Shanahan's offense and it's a lot of bootlegs. It's a lot of getting out of the pocket and trying to uh, uh, throw on the run. So I think that's critical to the success of this offense. You're right. At, this, at, at times, this offense is lackluster. At times, this offense is way too conservative. But if he can get on the run, get his legs moving, getting outside of the pocket. He can find guys downfield, and he can be a dual threat. Because if you blitz, he'll find that guy. If you don't, if you dare not to, he'll just take off and run for the first down. And really, he really breaks a defense. He makes defensive coordinators have a hard time sleeping at night. And I think that's what makes Robert Griffin the third so great as a lethal dual threat. Now, I know for the Colts, Andrew Luck, a very good rookie QB coming out of Stanford. What does he bring to the Colts, and do you think the Colts will have a winning season? I don't think the Colts will have a winning season automatically. Uh, I just don't see the enough depth at the wide receiver position, and I don't see enough defense besides Freeney and Mathis. I don't think, I think their secondary is questionable. I, I just, I think... He doesn't have enough, even if he does really well this year, like all our Cam Newton, what he did last year, even if he does have superb numbers, it won't translate to victory. It's just, just for the fact that his supporting cast and this franchise needs to develop a little bit more to get to that level. Now, so, you know, let's see how there, we got a lot of rookie quarterbacks, you know, Seahawks, Russell Wilson got named to be starter. For the Seahawks, do you think he'll? Do you think the Seahawks will contend against those Diners or not at all? Uh, no, they've got they've got a lot of work to do. I still don't think. I think San Francisco's a clear cut here. I I don't think so. I think Pete Carroll. I don't really trust that that much as a head coach. I think Russell Wilson is a, a solid quarterback, but I don't think. Hey, he, he, it's not going to be his fault. Everyone's always puts it on the quarterback's shoulders, like always. But I don't think it's going to be his fault. I think he's a solid, solid guy. But yet again, they, they don't have the quality pieces around him to support him. This is not going to be a winning team. Now, if they do, I think it's going to be all Russell Wilson. I think he'd be the main catalyst. I don't really like the way that the hierarchy and the men up top in this franchise. That 
that that's what that's where franchise is all sort of about from the owner to the GM to the coach all the way down. So if you can't have the continuity uh, that the Seahawks need, you're not going to be a solid. You're not going to be a consistent playoff team that will contend for championships. Now, how does Ryan Tannehill look this season for the Miami Dolphins? I think Tannehill. Sorry, technical yeah, difficulties here. Hours, hours oh, okay. The uh, I think that, to me, Tannehill is just, I think he's, again, with all these quarterbacks, there's so much, again, there's so much pressure on all these guys, especially what Tannehill has to go through with his team. Now, I think this guy is going to be, this, I think he's going to be pretty, pretty solid quarterback. Now, do I think they contend for the AFC East? No. I think it's going to take time for this organization. You look at the new upcoming quarterbacks, it's going to be a rough year for them. I, I don't think that these quarterbacks are necessarily going to jump into the playoffs. I don't think Tannehill jumps into the playoffs. It's going to be really hard. And the worst thing for, for I, I know, I know Tannehill has, you know, Bush, but it's not, it's not enough. They don't, to me, have the defense that can contend and the Patriots and the Bills to claim the division or to barely get in the wild card spot. I don't think they have enough gas in the tank to do so. Now, how does uh, the Tennessee Titans look out? They also have another rookie QB, Jake Locker, got over Matt Moore. How does that look out? Well, he's a second year man, by the way, uh, Robert. Locker, oh, my to me, uh, it's fine. It's fine. I make that mistake too a ton of times. Locker, I think, really accurate. He showed me a lot against the Saints last year, almost getting that victory, I believe. I think he lost by a touchdown or so. But he was really competitive. This guy's got some wheels. He's, he's extremely accurate. Uh, good team leader. This guy will get this team into the playoff line. Does he get them there? I don't know. But this team will be competitive, and this team will be a team to watch out for in December. Now, how does Brandon Whedon look for the Cleveland Browns? They have not been a good team for years to come. Well, for years, because I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't heard big talk around them until Brandon Whedon comes comes up and becomes a starter. Do you think? Do you think he'll uh, provide a lot for the Browns? Look. Tom Rakey on the Browns. I don't think they do well either. So it, it, this is a problem. There's a bunch of talent in the NFL. But it, like I said, my main focal point is you don't have the guys around you who are at solid guys at your skill position and you don't have depth and you don't have continuity. You're not going to win consistently. And that's where the Cleveland Browns are. Their state of mind is with their new head coach, with, with this whole new system, I don't think they have what we didn't need, the support needed. So I don't see the Browns doing that well. Yes, he's talented. Yes, the guy's prepared. Yes, the guy, you know, can make all can make some good quality throws, but not a good offensive line. It's going to be a really tough year for Weeden. It's going to be a huge wake up, wake up call for this Cleveland Brown offense and especially their franchise. They need to find some skill, quality skill position players and get some more depth. Because if they don't do that, they're going to still stay down the drain and still be a laughing stock in the National Football League. Well, I totally agree with you, Cameron. Well, we're going to go to break here, but when we come back, Cameron's still going to be on the line with us. We're going to talk about week one. The referee situation has not been very good for the NFL. And the Tavares Jackson traded the Seattle to the Buffalo Bills. And then Sean getting cut after this. Hello, and we are back on the Deet Sports Talk. Hello, and we are back on the Deet Sports Talk. I am your host, Robert Dieters, and we are back with Cameron from the host of the Cameron Sadeghi Show. And Cameron, how is the week one? I know this has been a weird process for the NFL referees because they have to have replacements. Do you think that's... What do you think of that? It's going to hurt, even just for this one week. This really agitates me 
with this whole situation here. I mean, I, I rant, but I know, you know, your show's got limited time here, but these replacement refs, they're not going to call... You know, I'm a little bit scared here. In the fourth quarter of a tight game, hey, every week counts. There's only six, 16 games, 17 weeks. You know, one game could make a huge difference. If we have a call at the end and it goes the wrong way or they cannot clearly confirm challenges or they don't know how to use the technology correctly and they don't know rules such as leaping or these complicated rules or, you know, contact rules or unnecessary roughness, how much, when, late, all these different variables, this will affect the outcomes of out the outcome of critical games. And if it really boils down to it, it may increase to more injuries. It's gonna hurt the quality of the game. And to be quite honest with you, I'm a little scared for the NFL here. I think Monday morning will be very interesting. After the Sunday slate of games, and if there's a bad call that occurs and it's not confirmed and it's not changed and it's not reviewed, they will be scrutinized by the whole NFL world, and it will be pretty hard. I, I, I just hope that nothing bad happens to the NFL. I love the NFL. So I hope these replacement refs really control this and really keep this on tack, and I think everything will be fine. Now I actually have a question here from Steven Hughes on this topic. Will the temporary refs be refing throughout the entire season? Will they be out there for the rest of the season? Is that what he asked? Will the temporary refs be refing throughout the entire season? Uh, no, I, I actually think that maybe, I, I think when these refs recognize after week one what it feels like not to be on the field, not, you know, not to be paid, they're going to understand what they're missing. They're going to understand that the quality of the game has, has a lower to fit. Even the NFL is going to understand that. So I think they will reach a conclusion. I don't see these replacement reps, you know, staying here the whole entire year because if that were to happen, the ratings would drop. And I know the NFL multi-billion dollar machine won't take that risk. They are the top league. They are the money king. They won't take that risk and put themselves in jeopardy. They are not that type of league. All right, well, good good observations there and great points there, Cameron. Now let's go up to another topic in the NFL. Vince Young getting cut from the Buffalo Bills. What do you think of that? It's unfortunate because, to be honest, with the new guy that they're putting in, Tavares Jackson, I don't honestly, I don't see that as an upgrade. I think that Vince Young is better than Tavares Jackson at this point. Just solely on comparison. I'm not going to bring out stats, but when you look at the film, it shows so. I think Vince Young is a solid backup. I want, it really, it's questionable what the Buffalo Bills, you know, really did. I, it's, it still befuddles me to this day. You know, Vince, he's, he's going to find a spot. People say, oh, this is the end. It's not the end for Vince Young. His talent level's so high. And I, I, to me, I still don't understand why they cut him. Is it attitude reasons? I'm not sure. It, it hasn't been communicated effectively. So if Vince is not put in a situation, then that will just surprise me here. He's got all the mechanics. He's got the legs to to win games. He showed in that 99-yard classic signature drive against the Arizona Cardinals a few years back, it showed true vintage Vince Young. That, that was true Vince Young right there. That was a Vince Young drive. So, to me, I think Vince Young has a ton of upside. I think actually, dare I say this, but I'm going to be a little bit candid here, I think Jeff Fisher somewhat ruin the career of Vince Young. Yes, I know he had the personality issues in Tennessee, but he did not. I don't think Jeff Fisher handled the situation the correct way, and it's rubbed off of Vince Young, and it's rubbed off of uh, the whole NFL and all and all uh, the team's mindsets on what they think about.